Good evening, everybody out there. Let's see. Facebook is coming online. Instagram looks like it's live. There we go. We are live. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen out there. It's Saturday night for the College of Swing Era Knowledge, Balboa edition tonight. Because I've got half, half, happy feet. All right. So welcome to Joel's College of Swing Era Knowledge. Monday, jazz. Tuesday, Charleston. Wednesday, Lindy Hop and Jazz. Thursday, evening, swing. Class here in Spokane. Friday, shag. Saturday, Balboa night and Sundays for teachers and organizers. So tonight is uh, hello, hello out there. Um, tonight is more of a chat or discussion. So I'm hoping we get some interaction, maybe some questions from the audience on Facebook. Um, but uh, my plan last week was what I called Ann Mills wisdom. And um, if you heard the story last week, I apologize for the repeat. But back in the day when we were doing Balboa Rendezvous and we were inviting all of these original dancers to the Balboa Pavilion for the Sunday night dance, I had the great opportunity to, to work with and interview a lot of the original dancers, Ann Mills being one of them. And we went to her house to do a nice little interview of questions we had. And this was right around 2006, 2007, because specifically at that time, besides the Bell Rendezvous, besides Swing Camp Oz in Australia, um, I put together this thing called the Balboa Follower Festival, and we wanted to feature Ann Mills. So we wanted to get a little bit of a Q&A ahead of time, but she did not want to be filmed. As beautiful as she always looked, she refused to be filmed, so we literally had the, the camera like stashed in a pillow so she knew it wasn't on her but we had all the audio going so i i took the whole uh footage of that interview and and broke it into these audio clips so which in my files i call it ann mills audio and last week i was going through so many clips and realized there's a lot of fun steps that she would talk about so last week was ann mills signature steps so if you haven't had a chance to look at that and if, I'm surprised more people didn't notice my my footwear, my uh, my shoe choice last week. Um, but I went through some steps and some things that she talked about were her favorite steps. And I had a bunch of other clips of her just kind of talking about the Balboa, what she thought was the future of Balboa, the, the state of Balboa at the time in 2007-ish. And I thought that would be really nice to share with people historically and just to get a feel for what Ann Mills thought about the dance. So again, I'm looking for some, some interactive Q&A possibly here with folks that are on the Facebook. Please jot a question down or two. But without further ado, we're going to get going right into Ann Mills' wisdom. And uh, I'm just going to go, uh, it's sequentially in order, and I think that would be the order of the talk that we did with her. So some stuff might not might be uh, piggybacking on other things, but we're just going to start with this, which is Anne's take on uh, a following. So let's let's give this a listen. The follows have to change their style and adapt every man they dance. Yes. Okay. The follows have to adapt to everyone they dance with. Now, I remember um, this was after talking about some of her favorite dancers. Um, I'm going to go through my list here. This could be a whole other talk. But uh, she talked about Dean Collins. She danced with Dean, uh, Sam Dominguez, Mike Tremini, Bill Alcorn, Bob Sergison, and Harry Berlin. Sergison. And uh, a lot of the one of the important things about these dancers that I just named, some of you other than Dean Collins, I think most of you will say, who are these people? Well, the reason we don't know who these people are is because this was pre-camera days. This is pre-Bobby McGee's um, camera footage where you see a bunch of Willie and Maxie and Bart and those guys dancing. And so Anne was talking about some of her favorite dancers. She said this guy, Bill Alcorn, was the best and, and one of her favorites to, to dance with. But we have no footage 
of Bill Alcorn, to my knowledge. So if anybody has any footage or knows of any steps from Bill Alcorn, please let me know because I'd love to, to see it. But pre-camera days, she was talking about all these favorite leads. And then she said, of course, that followers need to adapt to every leader that they dance with. So let's continue to the next where she talks about it's kind of a leader does his thing and then the follower gets a chance to do her thing. Do something, and you know, this is something that follows don't realize. There are times when you stop and you let him do that thing. And then here comes your thing because when you break back in, now you get your own personal moves. You, you just have to take it away from them, that's all. <laughs> so you just have to take it away from them. Um, I think that would be her definition of back leading. <laughs> um, but it was, she was talking about giving the leader a chance to do his thing and then followers stop, let them do their thing. Um, if they're doing kind of a flashier step and then just don't be afraid to come in and do your thing as, as well. Okay. And our next, the next clip here, um, she's talking about uh, some of the the recent contests she saw at maybe Camp Hollywood or, or Bell Rendezvous and talking about the future dancers and what the old timers thought of that. Look at these new kids. Yeah. And these kids are running really nice. Oh, I should say. Oh, yeah. We all of us. We stand in awe of what everybody's doing. Yeah. It's fun. So she says, but we stand in awe of uh, what the, these dancers are doing. So uh, that was really nice to hear. Um, it's always nice to hear from a, an original dancer that they're, they're impressed with the things that we do because there weren't a lot of them that were impressed <laughs> with what we did. And so that was nice of Anne to hear. And if you hear the gentleman's voice in the background, that's um, her husband, John, John Mills. Um, so <laughs> it was fun because we were trying to interview Anne and he was like constantly constantly chiming in. I think even on one of these, you're going to hear her like say like, be quiet, John, or something like, I hope I, I have that one. Okay. So uh, they stand in awe of the, the dancers that were doing their thing back in 2007. So I think they'd be very pleased with what we're doing with the dance today. And, uh, and here she talks about um, dancing flamboyantly or, um, or flashy and bringing up, I think, So You Think You Can Dance or Dances with the Stars or something like that. My feeling is that when you dance and you're flamboyant, you're not really dancing. If you watch the show So You Think You Can Dance, mm -hmm. all of them do tricks. Mm -hmm. But when it well, comes to honest and goodness dance, they're, they're they're there's really a huge difference. They learn they to dance. dance. <laughs> They you know, dance. They come on there doing their gym work. You so. use you use your feet and end. So um, she's talking about like, the, the show. So you think you can dance and how they dance flamboyantly, and that that's not really dancing. And I think that that's interesting um, because I, I remember my my mom would always tape. So you think you could dance and and send me stuff and be like look, 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 I filmed stuff for you. I'm like, well, I don't want to watch So You Think You Can Dance because, I, sorry, I like Anne. I'm just like, you know, they're just kind of doing some flashy stuff, but are they really, really dancing? And that, that was her point. You know, um, the show was fun and they enjoyed it and they said they were very talented, but the flamboyant stuff really doesn't cut it. That's not really dancing. So I thought that was kind of cute. All right, now we get into some key information for leaders out there. So if you're out there and you're listening and you are a leader, whether you're a female or male leader, doesn't matter. This is a huge takeaway straight from one of the greatest Balboa followers in history. So listen closely. Most of these, I don't know how people teach Bell. I really don't understand it. But it, they hold you too close. How can you do things with your feet and your knees and your body if you're uptight against somebody's chest and then you have to lean away from them to do something with your feet? Well, explain that. I'll try, try to talk to us. You know, I know I've offended some of them because they come up and they say, I, would you dance Whoops. with me? And then if someone's got you tight, how can you dance? And, and you know, we're not that big. So if a fellow is 5'10", 
or six feet tall, and he holds you real close, your nose is right smack dab in his shoulder. Where is our oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Even worse. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, what can I say? You just have to tell. You just have to tell them. Uh, okay. So leaders, please be mindful of how much you're squeezing your partners. And, um, and I love at the end how she says, you, you just have to tell them. Um, I, can't, I can't tell you how many private lessons I've done over the years where the followers say they don't like Balboa because they don't like the way it feels. And then I'll dance with them. And then one of their initial um, statements after I dance with them is like, mm, yeah, people don't really feel like that. And so that's a very telling sign um, if I'm in another city or country when I hear somebody say that. And uh, what I try to do in my own scene is really try to get the leaders to understand how comfortable the dance should feel to your partner. And, and so, but again, followers, if, if you're getting the squeeze, you got to let them know, let them know. And, uh, you know, try to explain to them how it's not really necessary to squeeze them tight <laughs> to, uh, to do the dance. So it gives you a little bit of space to do your footwork and all your other good stuff. All right. Now we're going to get into her talking about um, dancing fast. And, and Maxie Dorf back in the day, I remember him telling Valerie and I something about this too. He would say, um, don't, I mean, everybody back in the day thought Balboa equals fast. And, and Maxie said, don't, don't scare them. Don't, don't put on something so crazy fast that regular people can't dance to it. You're going to scare people away from the dance. And then here's um, Anne talking about uh, fast doesn't cut it and dancing slower is better. So I thought that was interesting feedback from some of these original dancers. So um, these next two clips are about speed and Balboa. You know, you know, just dancing fast doesn't cut it. Nope. That was so fun. I just can't believe what they did. It's amazing what these kids can do. And you notice when you dance fast enough, you make a mistake and nobody knows. The slower you the slower you dance, the better you better dance. Okay, so she says, um, fast doesn't cut it. Um, if you're dancing fast and you make a mistake, like you, people aren't even going to see it. Well, that's a, I guess that can be a good thing. But she's saying how like slower is better. When you dance slow, you better dance well. So dancing slow a lot of times will get you that precision, will get you your your solid fundamentals, your, your solid um, – basics if you will dancing slower um actually let me let me go down i'm going to go down to i don't want to lose my place but since we're talking about slower this is for mickey out there <laughs> mickey and kelly well mickey's championing the slow bell stuff but i want to play what she said about slow bell boa i love this okay here we go Honey, it's just Balboa with a twinkle. It is. You are right. You are right. It feels good. See, see this, this, this. Okay. The Laminu, L-A-M-I-N-U, uh, something Ray Cunningham would bring up uh, every time at the Bell uh, Rendezvous Masters Q&As. And it was funny because he would bring it up and talk about Balboa, but he said there was another great dance called the Laminu, and you could see like eyes roll. And so I wish, like, I wish they all would have chimed in, because afterwards, after the Q and A's were all all over, then I'd go and sit at the table and ask everybody how they were doing, and and that's when you'd hear the dirt. And I said, next year you got to talk about this, because they they all rolled their eyes about like slow Balboa and Laminu, but. Um, and like, and here's Anne saying like that, that slow bell, it's just bell bow with a twinkle. I love the, I love that. So Mickey, when you keep teaching your slow bell classes, remember to quote Anne that this is just bell boa with a twinkle. And so Ray Cunningham would always bring up the laminu or, um, slow bell boa. And, uh, but it, it feels good. So she danced with, with everybody. So, uh, but she was specifically referencing like Ray bringing that up all the time as far as a, a, a type of Balboa, if you will. So just Balboa with a twinkle. Okay, 
Now, this is a good one. This is um, talking about why some of the women were not known back in the day. All right, let's see this. And, and this, this is an example of why girls have never been great. The egos of the but fellows I, were so big. But I never get so, that again. <laughs> yeah, which is why, you know, and, they, and it's... So she says the egos of the fellows were so big, that's why you never really heard about the followers back in, in the day. And uh, that was one of the the reasons we wanted to do the Balboa Follower Festival back in 2007. We felt that was getting a, coming back into play a little bit. And uh, back in 2007, we had Ann come and pretty much knock everybody down a peg or two and <laughs> really get some more emphasis on the ladies of Balboa and the importance of it. So that was pretty cool. Um, okay, so this is a good one for the followers. We talked about the leaders not giving the squeeze. So we asked her why were the five bal gals in such demand? And if you don't know who those are, I'll name them off for you when we're done. I think uh, Anne talks about the five bal gals as well. So this is why they were in such high demand. Now, when you think about five bal gals and the things that made you the ladies that all these great leaders wanted to dance with, what qualities did you guys all have? We were young. We were at, well, that, <laughs> but we were young, honey, and, and as I said, we were dancing in four-inch heels. We went to the Palladium on Sunday, two o'clock in the afternoon, danced until six, went home, showered, changed our clothes, came back at eight, and danced until one. One reason, you have to be good because it makes the earth. They were in the band. Like I said, Madeline only danced with her husband. Marie Fido was sought after, and she was pretty. Very pretty. Um, Vena Archer, just cute as a button. Um, but she didn't dance with Well, she only really danced with the best, though, Vena did. She well, didn't. her husband wasn't the best. Well, John was the best, but then you and him a good And then it, it, here's another thing they all lived in the same apartment building in Hollywood. Hmm. So Vena and John lived upstairs. Bill Alcorn and his wife lived next door to them. Dean and the trainees lived downstairs. You know? Not really, yeah, really, yeah. So it was, uh, they were all together. So they were like sent to you. Yeah, and they borrowed clothes from one another. That <laughs> somebody didn't, somebody had nothing to eat. You know, they shared everything. Well, I mean, and, yeah. Okay, um, you might have missed it, um, but Anne was talking about how they were young and, and pretty, which, which, okay, but I don't, I don't buy that. And then John chimes in, it's kind of hard to hear, but he goes, you had to be really good to dance with, with, with these guys. And so some of the like bigger wigs back in the day. Um, and again, this is going back to her talking about the ego of, of the guys. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find the clip. Oh man. Okay. Anyway, I don't want to deviate from, from our topic tonight, but um, yeah, she would talk about how the, um, like the, when she first started dancing, the guys wouldn't dance with her. They kind of look her over and be like, mm, no. And so finally she just like would get out there and just rip it up. And then finally they're like, Oh man, she's really good. And like, so I'm not sure if you heard it, but John was like, you had to be really good to dance in the circles that they danced it. Now, she brings up another interesting point is they all lived together in West Hollywood. So there was this kind of core group of Balboa dancers that would go out all the time and they all lived together. And so if you didn't hear it, the five Bal gals are Madeline Green, and they said that she mostly danced with, um, with their husband, uh, Marie Fido, Vena Archer, um, and then Vena, Vena Archer, they're the one that said that her husband wasn't that good. <laughs> which I think is funny, uh, Edie Czar, and then Ann Mills. So again, Madeline, Marie, Venna, Edie, and Ann were the five bal gals, and I'll type that in at the end of the, the chat, and you guys can look them up if, if you want to. Um, and so they, they kind of stuck together and, and danced between each other, and then, of course, as way leads to way, I mean, it's like you see all these – people ripping it up and you want to do what they do. And so they're the ones that were in demand to dance the Balboa since they were dancing all the time. All right. And I wish um, we went down this path a little more, 
but Anne just talking about Balboa in general here. Balboa has so many pretty things to it, but I can't remember all of them because I think so. I, she said there are so many pretty things, but she can't remember all of them. And I, I wish we would have pressed her a little bit more to, like, tweak her memory. Uh, but um, yeah, I think well, she was really known for her footwork, her precision in her feet, and the little little kicks and lift, lifting her heels up. And again, I went through a lot of that last week. Um, so you can watch that if you want to. But she was all about the, the followers really showing off their footwork and their feet and things like that. Okay, now she's going to get into the future of Balboa. The future of Bal. The Bal has been uh, bastardized with the Bal swing. I'm serious. Okay, I want to stop there for a second. Um, because back in the day, she was one of the original Balboa dancers, meaning you did not lose closed embrace. So the original Balboa dancers would just stay in closed position, do their nice shuffly footwork, nice footwork variations. Again, how um, she emphasizes for the followers, like give a little kick, give a little lift, show off your feet. And she's talking about how Bell Swing, once Bell Swing became popular, it bastardized the Balboa. So you kind of lost, and I think that's true today, it's pretty rare. Think about the last time you went to a Balboa dance or a dance in general, and you see a couple that stays in closed position the entire two or three minute song. Chances are it's not going to happen. They're going to go into their throwouts, lollies, fancy moves that they learned at workshops. So I challenge everybody out there to keep the Balboa alive and stay in closed position and work on your footwork. So let's continue. Uh, however, everything has to change in this world. Yeah. And if to keep it alive, whatever young people do with it is just fun. Right? If you come and ask me what it is I do that's a little different in the in the pure bell, I'll tell anybody. But okay. what is that dance that so she's talking about um, appreciating the new things that people are bringing to the dance. She she was very giving. She she shared all of her knowledge that she had. She said, if anybody wants to know what I did. I'll tell them, but she was excited to see the competitions and see what other people were were adding to the dance. And so um, let's continue along that line, adding to Balboa in this clip. This business of labeling everything. Yeah. Well, that's today's generation. That we want to know yeah. exactly how to do it and give it a name. Up and give it a name. Which can be limiting because that's one of the things that I really like about talking to you guys is that you just did everything. Yeah. yeah. And you, you just did. dance. It's all and yes. today, in the way that the, it works, if you bring something in from maybe another dance form and yeah. you bring it into your elbow, or, or or I think it's or wonderful to invent something you get. Absolutely. Yeah. You criticize? Oh, well, hey, Bell 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 Balboa is pretty hard to edit. Well, what, well how do they, well, how do they just go on Bell Swing? Yeah. See? And, okay. So it got a little muddy there with John chiming in as well. But, um, and again, this was back in 2007 where we had, uh, I'll just say, some powers that be that were pretty much against like some new things being added into Bell. Followers, in our opinion, weren't being given the respect that they should give. So we're bringing this up to, to Anne. We're kind of teeing her up to talk about the way things were in the day. But she's talking about the, the future of Balboa. And, and the one thing um, is that they used to dance everything. So not only did they dance Bell, they danced Foxtrot, Waltz. They danced all of it. So I think they were more open to more influences in the dance back in the day. Uh, and, they, and the start of this is where she's talking about, like, it's our generation that wants to label everything. And so we want to put things in the Balboa box and we want to put things in the Lindy box and the blues box and the shag box. And, and I just, I personally want to have a big treasure chest of all of it. All the boxes are in there and just be able to take influences from every dance and, and throw it all together. And so again, if you want to be a purist, then, you're going to be a purist and say that this is Bal or this isn't Bal, and that's fine. You can have that opinion. Um, but Anne also appreciated putting everything in the Bal. So now she's going to talk about uh, keeping it alive. If you feel like it and it's a slower Bal, and you're just dancing away, and then you just give yourself a kick forward. Just out there. Make it interesting. 
do. I try. I do it. Do it. And however you feel, do it. They don't like it tough. Exactly. So you, you take the gumbo and you keep it alive. You keep the basis. Okay. So she says, keep it alive. And I forgot to, um, so when John was talking in that previous clip, he actually made the comment, Balboa is hard to, to add to. Um, but then Anne goes on to talk about like what, if it's slow, you dance slow and you, and you add a little thing in there. And, and if you want to do it, do it. And I got to find, I'm going to do a talk on Maxi Dorf um, soon. I've got some really nice uh, footage and, and what I call Maxiisms. And he basically echoed the same thing. Whatever you want to do, do it. And so this brings up like, what is your repertoire? What it, what's your what's your go to as far as like the rhythms you know, the footwork you know, the variations, whether it's moves or just variations with the feet. If you if you have a, an idea, do it. Right, uh, put some influence in there. Keep it alive is what she said at the very end of that. Okay, now they're going to talk about how Balboa is uh, good Balboa is what they used to do. Uh, and again, with the thought that, you know, it's only for fast dancing, but they would talk about dancing Lindy fast and needing a break. And that good Balboa is like sitting in a sofa chair. I love this. And this is mostly, I think John's talking a lot in here, but I love how they talk about Balboa as a nice comfy chair. Balboa became almost famous because Lindy is so hard. It's like you find a chair when you go to Balboa. Said Lindy is so hard, it's like you find a chair when you go into your Balboa. It's like you find a sofa. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's so tough, so hard, you're up there scrolling to fly, and before you go to Balboa, you get your rest, catch your breath, you get your but knees and your a little rest. It's beautiful. Okay, so literally she's saying you catch a rest, you get your, you know, your knees and your, your ankles a little break, and then you get back to your Lindy hop. Okay. Now we're going to get into, for followers, uh, footwear. Here we go. Ann Mills talking about footwear. I would tell girls, stop wearing those ugly shoes. Yes. Find some, you know, when you dance, boys wear pants, so their shoes aren't that obvious. But with girls, if you are wearing skirts and dresses, for God's sake, get rid of those ugly crack on your shoes. You know, these are comfortable. They're low. Get something that's female. You know, accent the positive. Yes. Well, like, did you wear heels when you did it? Absolutely. Even fast? Even fast. You know, you, you know, I never fast. noticed my dancing shoes. But honestly, my dancing shoes are. I've got them all in the closet in there. I can't bear to get rid of them. Do you know anybody that wears a size seven? <laughs> so now we know Anne wore a size seven. She kept all of her shoes. Um, I brought up the fact that I asked her if, because there, there was like a big debate about like wearing heels for Lindy Hop or, you know, like tennis shoes and kids. But you, you know, when you see Whitey's Lindy Hoppers doing all the air steps and the crazy stuff that they did, they were more in like a kid type tennis shoe. Um, versus the Balboa dancers, which obviously, um, just because of the way the technicalities of the dance, are able to wear heels and whatnot. But according to Anne, they would wear those heels with Fast Lindy as well. Now, I don't know if they were doing aerials and things like that, but it brought up um, some interesting things. And, and I, I think I played that clip last week. So in honor of Anne, I wore some pretty shoes last week when I showed her favorite footwork and stylings and things like that. All right, now this gets interesting. She's gonna talk about contests and judges. Did you ever dance in any contests? Never. We, would, we did, when we were out of town, uh -huh. when we'd go out of town to, you know, like the, a triple X convention in Fresno or something in Bakersfield, then of course they all knew we, we danced, all the people did. That's a totally different arena. Uh, and then we would, and, and after we won every every time we would be quit because it's not fair. We were so much better than. <laughs> I hope you heard that. She said like we were so much better than all of them. Like they'd go into contests when they were when they'd go out of town. So I thought that was pretty hilarious. Any of the locals? That, Any of the locals? No, we never did. I don't believe in it because I don't think the judging is fair. Did you hear that? She doesn't believe in contests because she doesn't believe the judging is fair. 
Hmm. Let's continue. Um, my next question. How were the contests? How were the contests judged? They were just somebody out of the crowd. They just line up three or four people and make them judges. Real, like real amateurs. Huh. Did you hear that? At their contests back in the day, they would just grab a few people out of the crowd. Three or four amateurs. Let's continue. In other words, you see, there could be no favoritism. There wasn't this uh, point system that they didn't do this right and that right and that right. It was they just watched and they picked out who they thought was the best match. And you didn't think back then it's the best, and it probably it probably was a more honest judging. Because whoever looked the best or did it the best. When you see the contest now, do you oh, usually yes. agree with who wins? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> I think there are a few people in the current bunch that are outstanding. And they're, they're going to win all the time. They're just trade off. Okay. This, th this clip, as I... For me, like a huge can of worms. Um, it just like brings up so many memories of things that went down back in the day uh, with the Bell Rendezvous specifically. Uh, and I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna name any names, but I'm just gonna say it because I got in big, big, big trouble because I had the wrong judges and the right couple didn't win, and then people boycotted the event because someone didn't win the contest because I had the wrong judges. And I love Anne saying, they just brought three or four people out of the crowd to watch. So there was, it was, there was no bias. There's no point system. Can of weeds, you better believe it. And, and so, and, and, and uh, oh yeah, oh, hey man. Oh, awesome, good to see you. Always love the testimony from the old, I'm telling you, Willie talked about it too. Like when it, Willie was so proud of these cups, he had all these cups in his basement and, I, and the cups, I mean, they were, oh, I wish I, they were small. They were just these little cups and it was just all these contests that he went in and he, and he won and it, was, it wasn't anything official. It was no um, relative placement and judges. And I mean, it was just like, they went, they ripped it up and whoever ripped it up the best won the contest. And Willie would always say like, what, what's this second and third place stuff? You didn't, you didn't win second place. You lost the contest. <laughs> I love that quote from him, but I love Anne talking about like, she doesn't believe in contests. It's, it's like, you know, it's biased with, with the judges and things like that. And it just brings up so many funny memories looking back now like how fired up people get when they compete and if they didn't win or who the right judges were <gasps> oh no i gotta boycott the event because my favorite dancer didn't win <laughs> okay let's continue uh let's see we talked about contest judges oh okay this is interesting uh what's happening now okay this is again from 2007 2007 uh, let me get the right clip here. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. What's happening? Oh, no, we already played that. Um, she was talking about uh, the, the egos and, uh, oh, where am I at? There we go. Naming steps, naming steps. Okay. Uh, we never named anything. That's only, that's only times with your generation of answers. The green and Putting a, a name to everything. I, I'm confused when I say, you know, you know the kick step, you know the go around, oh, that's the that. that. That's Maxi Dorf, that's Johnny's drop. That was it. Yeah, so we, we label everything. Yeah, probably if it's the best way of keeping track of it, fine. So we somehow we got on the topic of naming steps and she's just like, they just called it based on like who it was. Like it was Johnny's step or Maxi's step or or whatever and again going back to like putting things in, in the box and she said he says again to me that's your generation needing to to name the steps and then at the end of course and being so polite she's like you know if that's what you need to do then you go ahead and do that um so that's her take on on naming steps okay and then i like this quote she's talking about balboa and how there's a there's a commonality in the dance. And I would say that this is true of, of Bal, Lindy. So obviously like 
if you if you have a couple dancing bell next to Lindy, next to Charleston, next to Shag, you're gonna see those differences, right? But let's say, but you know, let's say you've got a bunch of people dancing Balboa, and you're gonna have the the commonality of Balboa, but that doesn't mean you can't bring in your originality. So this is Anne on uh, commonality with originality. I can jump around too, but you know, if, I if, if you've got, got if you've got together, I remember when you used to go to Germantown or Campbell's and they, they put yeah. these people out there, and when they did, you'd see a commonality, but you would also see a originality. I dance with a certain yeah. body style. Yeah. But you know, these things that well, the rest of us had a little bit of a hard time. Well, it took me years to dance that way. Uh, um, uh, John was talking in the background. I remember that now. Um, while she was talking about, she talked about uh, Jewel McGowan and and her, and then uh, if she said if we were dancing all next to each other, like we we're dancing the Balboa, but they each had their their originality. And since she brought up Jewel, um, let me, okay, there's one more, I got one more audio clip with, with her wisdom. Let me play this, and then we'll see if uh, I can bring up the Jewel clip. Okay. Um, another point I would make is that we danced from our hips, not from our knees. Okay, okay. I, I think that's a nice bit of wisdom um, from Ann Mills. Um, we dance from our hips, not from our knees. Um, and so, I mean, different instructors have different different ideas and different preferences, of course, but um, she's talking about how they she would use, basically from her center, from her core, using all of that, that movement, which again, I think is why she didn't like being squeezed when she uh, had her uh, doing her Balboa, right? So she doesn't want to have a squeeze if she's dancing from her hips and, and moving her body a little bit. I want to go back. I want to. There's another clip. I got some more stuff here. Uh, where's Jewel? Da, 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 da. Jewel, Jewel, Jewel. Where's the clip on Jewel? Oh my goodness. Hold on. I'm going to find this. So, all right, we're going to wrap this up pretty quickly, but I just wanted to, since she brought up Jewel McGowan on uh, that other clip, she says something about Jewel, which I think is neat. Here we go, Ann Mills, ba, 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 22. Okay, Jewel's influence. Okay, here we go. Jewel came around, now remember, this is the, the late 30s, early 40s. Uh, everything was very proper and very strict, and a lot of the big dance places didn't allow, no hanky-panky. No, no hanky-panky. But here came Jewel, and, and I guess it's the Diane Ball, which I'm going to, was looser and more open, so they got to do all of them. So when she came around and did her switch, push up, John. Which, oh, there it was. I'm so glad we ended there. Well, I got a little bit, but did you hear him? She says, hush up, John. So John's starting to talk about his stuff. She's trying to talk about Jewel. She's like, Hush up, John. I love it. Here we go. Let's finish. When she came around and did her switch, we all, oh, we were so shy. Sure. Sure. We could never she do it. So, this is how, give me your hand. This is how Joel came around, and when she went down like that, yeah, right. we, we, know, switch, right. we, we wouldn't then come back. You know, we were too pure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she's talking about uh, in the Lindy Hop. Jewel, Jewel McGowan coming in and, and really dropping her hips down and, and her knees down. And so watch Buck Privates, watch anything with Dean and Jewel. And I love that Anne gives reference to Jewel and saying like, they were too pure, they were too too proper to, to do that. And uh, I just think she was just absolutely adorable. Um, I hope, I mean, oh my goodness, I didn't even pay attention to the time. We're already 40 minutes in and all I literally did was just play to me, some of the most joyful memories I have of Balboa, uh, just sitting in like, like, there's no footage of this. I apologize, but I think there's value in listening and really pay attention to the words that some of these original dancers had for us. So again, I'm sorry I didn't get up and do any new steps for you all, but I think if you go back and you listen to this talk again, 
and jot down some notes from Ann Mills. I think it will improve your Balboa greatly. I am enjoying sharing um, some of the, the memories of my time with the old timers with all of you. I'm gonna get into some Maxi Dorf in, in a little, uh, in a few weeks. Uh, I just gotta clean some things up and uh, get my notes all together. But uh, here, I mean, this is all my, all my Ann Mills quotes from that, uh, that little session we had with her, 57 different things. I brought, and just in case, I brought up some of these in the history of Bell. Who did you talk to? I brought up Ann Mills and the things that she said as far as the start of Bell was. Last week was um, Ann's signature steps in styling. I brought up the things that she talked about or brought up. And then tonight was Ann Mills wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed the College of Swing era knowledge. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that I can reach out to all of you and give you some of the stuff that's in my, uh, in my noggin. Uh, we go live every night at seven o'clock, Monday jazz, Tuesday, Charleston, Wednesday, Lindy Hop and Jitterbug, Thursday evening swing here in Spokane, Friday shag, Saturday Balboa night, Sunday, a chat for teachers and organizers. If you ever have anything that you really want me to focus on or talk about a specific move, a movement, an idea, whatever, please let me know if it fits into one of the nights, I'll put it there. If you wanna bring it up while we're chatting, um, I can definitely switch gears and help answer any questions you have. And again, I hope you really enjoyed tonight. And until then, until the next time we meet, night, night, crazy about you, please donate, please donate. Stay safe, everyone.